Magnesium, vitamin D3, and vitamin K2 are some of the most commonly consumed supplements today, but many people still get the dosages completely wrong. Some take doses so low they don't even meet the basic maintenance level, which means that if you're already deficient, there's no way you'll correct that deficiency. On the other hand, some people take very high doses, thinking more is better, without realizing that excessive amounts, especially when taken over a long period, can actually do more harm than good. In this video, we're going to look at what the science really says about the ideal dosages of magnesium, D3, and K2. We'll explore whether those doses are enough to be effective, especially when dealing with deficiencies, and how the latest research differs from the old, often outdated recommended dietary allowances, RDAs. We'll also talk about whether those higher, more aggressive doses being recommended in recent studies are actually safe for long-term use. But that's not all. We'll also cover the best time of day to take these supplements for maximum absorption, and just as importantly, which supplements should never be taken together because they can interfere with each other's effectiveness. Before we dive in, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. It helps this video reach more people who need this information to make safer and smarter decisions about their health. Now let's get started. 1. RDA versus Newer Scientific Recommendations When it comes to magnesium, vitamin D3, and vitamin K2, most people rely on the official RDAs, the recommended dietary allowances, to guide their intake. But what many don't realize is that these RDAs were primarily designed to prevent severe deficiencies like rickets or hypomagnesemia, not to help people reach optimal health. Newer research has begun to challenge these outdated guidelines, showing that higher doses of these nutrients may be not only safe, but also far more effective, especially for people with modern lifestyles marked by stress, poor diets, and limited sun exposure. Let's start with magnesium. The RDA for magnesium is set at around 400-420 mg per day for men and 310-320 mg for women. But this amount only covers basic physiological needs and often falls short in correcting a deficiency. Several newer studies suggest that people may actually benefit more from doses ranging between 500 to 800 mg per day of elemental magnesium, especially those experiencing chronic stress, insomnia, muscle cramps, or blood sugar issues. A 2018 review in the journal Nutrients pointed out that most people in developed countries fail to meet even the minimum RDA and that raising magnesium intake could have major benefits for cardiovascular and metabolic health. However, these higher doses must be approached with some care. The form of magnesium makes a big difference. Glycinate and citrate, for instance, are more absorbable and better tolerated than the cheaper magnesium oxide. Also, those with kidney issues should not supplement with magnesium without medical supervision, since their ability to excrete excess amounts may be impaired. Next, we have vitamin D3 one of the most studied and supplemented vitamins today. The RDA currently recommends 600 IU per day for most adults and 800 IU for those over 70. But again, these levels are mainly intended to prevent rickets or severe bone loss, not to optimize immune function, mood, hormone health, or inflammation control. More recent research has shown that doses ranging from 2,000 to 5,000 IU per day are often required to raise and maintain healthy blood levels of vitamin D, especially in people who don't get regular sun exposure or have darker skin. One landmark study published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism found that taking 4,000 IU per day was safe and often necessary to bring vitamin D levels into the optimal range of 40 to 60 nanograms per milliliter. However, because vitamin D is fat-soluble and stored in the body, it's important to monitor blood levels if you're taking higher doses long-term. Also, taking vitamin D alone, without K2, can cause calcium to build up in the wrong places, such as arteries or soft tissue increasing the risk of calcification and cardiovascular issues. That brings us to vitamin K2, a nutrient often overlooked in mainstream health advice. The RDA we hear for vitamin K, typically 90 to 120 micrograms per day, applies primarily to vitamin K1, which plays a role in blood clotting. Vitamin K2, however, serves a very different function. It helps shuttle calcium away from arteries and soft tissues and directs it to where it's truly needed, your bones and teeth. New research is now suggesting that daily doses of 100 to 200 micrograms of vitamin K2, especially in the form of MK7, may offer real protection against bone loss and vascular calcification. For example, a study published in Osteoporosis International found that 180 micrograms of MK7 per day, over three years, 
significantly improved bone density, and reduced bone loss in postmenopausal women. Another study in thrombosis and hemostasis showed that this same dose could also improve arterial flexibility, making it beneficial for heart health. Some trials have even explored higher doses, up to 360 micrograms daily, with promising results. That said, it's important to note, though, that a subset of individuals report heart palpitations when taking high doses of K2, so anyone considering doses above 100 mcg should monitor their response and consult a healthcare provider. Moreover, those on anticoagulants like warfarin need medical supervision before beginning K2 supplementation. 2. Safe Upper Limits and Toxicity Risks Understanding the safe upper limits of magnesium, vitamin D3, and vitamin K2 is essential for anyone using these nutrients regularly. While they offer a wide range of benefits, exceeding safe levels, especially over extended periods, can lead to side effects, some of which are subtle and may go unnoticed until damage has already occurred. Starting with magnesium, it's important to note that magnesium from food sources poses no toxicity risk in healthy individuals. The body efficiently eliminates excess magnesium through the kidneys. However, the story changes when it comes to magnesium supplements. The tolerable upper intake level for supplemental magnesium is set at 350 mg of elemental magnesium per day. This threshold was chosen primarily to prevent common side effects like diarrhea, which is the most frequently reported symptom of taking too much magnesium at once. Still, in clinical practice and nutritional therapy, many people, especially those with deficiencies or chronic stress, safely take higher doses in the range of 500 to even 800 milligrams per day, especially when the dosage is split into two or more servings and taken in forms that are more absorbable, such as magnesium glycinate or citrate. According to a meta-analysis published in Advances in Nutrition, Doses ranging from 120 to 973 mg per day have been studied with diarrhea being the most common limiting side effect. However, for individuals with compromised kidney function, the risk becomes more serious as the kidneys may struggle to eliminate excess magnesium, which can lead to dangerously low blood pressure muscle weakness and irregular heart rhythms. In rare cases, it can progress to cardiac arrest. Turning to vitamin D3, this fat-soluble nutrient can accumulate in the body, making long-term high dosing riskier. The established upper safe limit is currently set at 4,000 international units per day for adults, but newer research has challenged this number. Clinical studies and reviews, including one published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, have shown that doses up to 10,000 IU daily are generally safe when used for short-term correction of deficiency. In fact, many physicians routinely prescribe 50,000 IU weekly for several weeks in people with low vitamin D status, followed by a lower maintenance dose. Problems typically arise not from short bursts of higher intake, but from prolonged use of high doses without proper monitoring. Chronic overconsumption can lead to hypercalcemia, a condition where blood calcium levels rise too high. This can result in symptoms like nausea, vomiting, kidney stones, confusion, and calcium deposits in soft tissues, such as the kidneys or arteries but most cases of documented vitamin D toxicity examined only without vitamin K2. Many experts have argued doses as high as 10,000 IU can be taken daily as long as it's paired with the appropriate amount of vitamin K2. Speaking of K2, particularly the MK7 form, it has one of the most favorable safety profiles among these three nutrients. To date, no official upper intake limit has been established, largely because toxicity has not been observed in studies even when doses reach as high as 360 micrograms per day over long periods. Clinical trials have shown that K2 can be taken safely for years and in fact, it plays a protective role in cardiovascular and bone health by activating matrix GLA proteins that prevent calcium buildup in arteries. However, despite its overall safety, some individuals do report unexpected side effects when using higher doses, especially above 200 micrograms daily. These side effects include heart palpitations or a fluttering sensation in the chest. While the cause is not entirely clear, it's suspected that sudden shifts in calcium movement or interactions with other supplements may play a role. 3. Best time to take magnesium D3 and K2 The timing and manner in which you take magnesium, vitamin D3 and vitamin K2 can significantly impact how well your body absorbs and uses them. Starting with magnesium, it's best to split the dose into two or more servings throughout the day, such as morning and evening, because the body absorbs it more efficiently in smaller amounts. Taking a large dose all at once can overwhelm absorption and often leads to side effects like loose stools. Many people find that taking magnesium before bed is especially helpful for promoting relaxation and better sleep, 
particularly if using forms like magnesium glycinate. As for vitamin D3 and K2, both are fat-soluble nutrients, meaning they need dietary fat to be properly absorbed. For this reason, it's ideal to take them with your largest meal of the day, or at least with a meal that contains healthy fats, like avocado, olive oil, eggs, or nuts. Studies show that taking vitamin D with fat increases blood levels significantly compared to taking it on an empty stomach. K2 should be taken at the same time as D3, since they work synergistically. Vitamin D helps you absorb calcium, while K2 directs that calcium to the bones and keeps it away from arteries. Now should these be taken with magnesium? The answer is yes, but not necessarily at the exact same time. While there's no harmful interaction, some evidence suggests that magnesium is needed to convert vitamin D into its active form, so having both in your routine is important. Whether you take magnesium with breakfast and D3 plus K2 with lunch, or magnesium at night and the others in the morning, consistency is what matters most, along with pairing fat-soluble vitamins with meals. 4. Dangerous and ineffective supplement combinations. While magnesium, vitamin D3, and K2 are incredibly beneficial, certain supplement combinations can reduce their effectiveness, or worse, create health risks when taken incorrectly. One of the most common mistakes is taking high-dose vitamin D3 without K2. Another issue is pairing calcium supplements with magnesium at the same time. These two minerals can compete for absorption in the intestines, especially when taken in large doses. It's often better to separate them by a few hours, unless you're taking a balanced formula designed to prevent this interference. Also, magnesium should not be taken with zinc or iron, as high doses of these minerals taken together can interfere with each other's absorption. 5. Signs You're getting the dosage right or wrong. When you're getting the dosage right for magnesium, vitamin D3, and K2, you'll often feel it. With magnesium, proper dosing usually leads to better sleep, reduced muscle cramps, calmer nerves, and regular bowel movements. But if you're getting too much, you may notice loose stools, fatigue, or even low blood pressure, especially in those with kidney issues. For vitamin D3, the right dose often results in improved mood, more energy, stronger immunity, and less frequent colds. But if you're overdoing it, especially without enough K2, you might feel nausea, poor appetite, or signs of calcium buildup like kidney stones or muscle aches. When taking vitamin K2 correctly, you typically won't feel much immediately, but long-term it plays a critical role in preventing artery calcification and supporting bone strength. That said, some people are sensitive to higher doses and may feel heart palpitations or restlessness like we said before. These are signs you may need to lower your intake. Getting your nutrient dosing right isn't about taking more. It's about taking what your body actually needs in the right form at the right time and in the right combination. When magnesium, vitamin D3, and K2 are used wisely and together, they can support everything from your bones and heart to your mood and immune system. But remember, what works for one person may not be right for another. That's why it's so important to talk to your primary care provider before making any significant changes to your supplement routine especially if you're on medications or managing a chronic condition. Testing your nutrient levels can also help guide your decisions with more accuracy and safety. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and share it with someone who could benefit from it. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos packed with research-backed health insights. Thank you for watching, and as always, take care of your health, because it's the foundation of everything you do.